One is a small number, and for a limited time, I have a $1 a month deal if you sign up at theathletic.com slash thinkingbasketball. They feature huge names like David Aldridge and John Hollinger, and also have great local coverage for every team. You can download the app, customize who you want to follow, and also help support this channel by heading over to theathletic.com slash thinkingbasketball for that six-month dollar special today. It's hard to say exactly who played the greatest game or greatest series of all time, but LeBron James' last three games of the 2016 season might be the best three consecutive games ever played. Like many of the all-time greats, LeBron has a collection of greatest hits, playoff games that define his career, but it's rare for these games to happen consecutively and with the season on the line to say nothing of a 73-win opponent in Golden State. Game 5 felt like a coronation in Oakland with the Warriors fans ready to crown their 73-win champion. And it was a pedestrian start for LeBron with a turnover and a post-up that turned into a missed fadeaway. A few minutes in and he comfortably knocked down a catch and shoot three, which was an ominous sign for Golden State because they wanted to concede these shots to James by going under ball screens like this. Naturally, LeBron missed a few of these, but his makes led to aggressive shooting. Golden State sags off and he's quick to fire, and it was clear his jumper was working when he dropped this pull-up. These long jumpers start to soften up the defense. A big man comes up a bit higher, and a little hesitation is enough to drive it home and finish. Next time down, it's more pick and roll into the big man, and LeBron turns the corner, but Golden State sends extra help, so he somehow makes this kick out pass and then hangs around to clean up the miss for two. Because he finishes at the rim like a cyborg, LeBron's hot shooting left the Warriors big men between a rock and a hard place. They were reluctant to wander too far out and instead conceded mid-range jumpers, which LeBron was happy to rise up and knock down. The Warriors struggled in part because Draymond Green was suspended for just a bit of extracurricular activity at the end of Game 4, which weakened Golden State's defenses against this pick and roll action, and left them with weaker rim protection in general. James Michael McAdoo is a huge downgrade from Draymond in these small lineups, and bigger lineups lacked that extra rotation to slow down the L train. All of this caused Golden State to try switching, but that still gave LeBron airspace on his jumper, and so next time they switch, the defender slides up to cover the shot, and LeBron just drops the Akron hammer, and it's three the old-fashioned way. On this trip, they try to avoid the switch, and the moment James senses Andre Iguodala leaning one way, he attacks and it's over. Andrew Bogut's injury early in the third quarter crippled the Warriors' backline for the rest of this game, and that's when LeBron's all-time playmaking started to take over. To stop the pick-and-roll bleeding, Golden State brought an extra defender over, so LeBron whipped a skip pass for a great look. Later, they tried to blitz James with that big man with an extra defender slid underneath, so he patiently looks that defender off and drops a lob into the bigger Tristan Thompson for a bucket. And there was ingenious manipulation in his passing, running that same pick and roll and ball faking Clay Thompson out of the lane for another easy bunny. LeBron showcased a wide variety of passes down the stretch in this series, and his playmaking was even better in Game 6. A quick kick out here after drawing a double team in the post leads to another three. And in transition, he would have made Magic Johnson proud. First that bounce pass, and then this absurd lob to the backside, which takes some stones to throw over multiple defenders, and it's a bullseye. Even some of his ideas that flamed out were sage-level passes. Harrison Barnes still doesn't know where the ball went, and if Thompson handles it cleanly, it's another layup. His passing wasn't perfect, those kinds of games are incredibly rare, but he was still a playmaking machine, setting up his teammates for a barrage of open looks that led to a 118 offensive rating in games 5 and 6. 
His scoring even provided some gravity, working a little handoff here that sent both defenders toward LeBron, leading to an easy layup. The filthiest pass of them all might have been this wrist flick out of the pick and roll, threading the needle through a brief moment when Iguodala peels off and Thompson is momentarily free at the rim. By game six, LeBron's court mapping was as dialed in as his jump shot, flipping this ahead to Kevin Love, then running it down and instantly knowing a shooter was still open at the line for another long range missile. In addition to some great fast break passing, LeBron's transition scoring was on full display in these three games. James is the best transition scorer in league history because of his size and strength. Mixing that with his dexterity makes him nearly impossible to contain in the open court. And even at 31, his explosive straight line speed was still enough to outrace most players on the planet. We'll see that explosive full court burst again in a moment. Exploding late in a playoff series is nothing new for LeBron as he figures out his opponent. In his prime, his rebounding assists, turnovers, scoring volume, and efficiency have all gone up in games five, six, or seven compared to games one through four of a series. His one number metrics, like basketball references box plus minus or game score, all improve in the back half of a series, whereas someone like Kobe Bryant stays about the same and Michael Jordan's actually drop off due to a dip in scoring. So it should come as no surprise that down the stretch of game six, LeBron did a little of everything, attacking a closeout here and contorting for a left-handed finish. Off of this miss, he times a cut perfectly, flying by Klay Thompson for a dunk. He crashes the boards from the perimeter and is just too big for anyone in Golden State's small ball lineup. And this was part of a stretch where LeBron marched off 18 consecutive points for the Cavs, showing off his footwork in isolation to earn more trips to the free throw line. At times, it started to feel like he was toying with the Warriors' elite defense, pump fake, spin, and then again earning free throws with a ball fake. Then he just worked his way into the lane and started making all kinds of stuff, and even with Iguodala draped all over him, LeBron showed the entire repertoire. But James punctuated this game on the defensive end, sending Steph Curry's shot into the front row and telling him, pass it next time or I'll do it again. I'm assuming he issued that friendly warning because in game seven, Curry tried it again and LeBron inhaled his shot. Or maybe he asked him, remember last time you tried this because he tracked him down in game five for another huge swat. Curry wasn't the only one who succumbed to the LeBron chase down in these games. Note LeBron timing up his steps here in game five against Iguodala. In game six, after a tough miss against the shot clock, James hustled back to give Draymond Green the exact same treatment. And LeBron's rim protection was prominent in these 12 quarters, sliding down to erase shots like a dominant big man. This is an incredible reaction. He's on Draymond but spots a cutter and instantly beams himself up to the rim to save the layup. That's crazy! These don't always need to be blocks either. This is a high level vertical contest any paint protecting center would admire. And that means his mere presence can deter shots as the Warriors pass out against his rotation here for a long jumper. This play in game five was also remarkable, backpedaling against a three on one, waiting for a pass and then doing just enough to save a dunk. To be fair, his defense wasn't perfect either. For instance, he misses a pick six here and leaves Clay open for a clean three. But his man defense was strong enough for the most part, and some of his reads were spectacular. Curry backdoors Love here, and LeBron immediately pounces and calls for a switch, and that turns into a long jumper instead of a potential layup. He's following Sean Livingston on this one, but recognizes the pick and roll danger and blows the play up for a steal. Some of these were really high leverage plays. Green's driving for a layup and LeBron snatches this pass like Odell Beckham and it's a layup on the other end of the court. 
I discuss LeBron's elite reflexes in his 2020 defensive profile, and they kick in here. Iguodala's wide open, but James reads Clay's eyes, and it's a stick save. LeBron's hands were just super active like this throughout these games, throwing them into the passing lane and deflecting balls. He even flicked one from behind, chasing Clay around, which led to a runout. And this defensive impact is what theoretically puts these three games over the top for me. It's six halves that include red hot big time scoring, incredible playmaking, and these huge defensive plays. In games six and seven, there was a more concerted effort to attack Curry in pick and roll situations, punishing the Warriors for switching him onto LeBron. This didn't lead to a bunch of scores per se, but instead collapsed the Warrior defense, allowing James to create open shots for teammates. Once again, it was LeBron's passing that exposed Golden State's help. He looks to the corner with two bodies in the paint and then throws the change up and it's another layup. This mismatch hunting put Curry in foul trouble in game six, and he's sloppy here with five fouls, and there's yet another LeBron James dime out of this, faking a shot to freeze Draymond because he's a brilliant lob defender. Whenever Green could stay with LeBron, it made life significantly harder and kept Golden State from scrambling on defense. Other defenders didn't stop James from creating though. He gets a step on Clay here and sets up another open jumper. I do think Cleveland drained too much clock looking for these switches on a few possessions down the stretch, leaving LeBron in isolation mode with a short clock to work with. And with about two minutes to go in the third, a failed switch hunting attempt led to a run out for Golden State and Sean Livingston tied the game at 71. But LeBron had an answer, backing Livingston down and making yet another steep fadeaway. A few trips later, he churned back into the lane for another short shot to put the Cavs ahead by one. After one of those late clock switches, he drove left and somehow kissed this runner over Draymond's help. And with the Cavs trailing by one inside five minutes, his incredible shot making continued, draining a late clock three to put Cleveland ahead. After that, both teams struggled to score, just stuck on 89, and then it happened. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup, oh, blocked by James! LeBron James with the rejection! That speed and rim protection we saw throughout these games saved the day, with LeBron sizing up the block exactly like he did in Game 5, and I'm not sure if any other player in NBA history could make that play. A minute later, Kyrie Irving hit the game winner, the Cavs stunned the 73-win Warriors, and all told, LeBron James averaged 36 points, 12 rebounds, and just under 10 assists, along with three steals and three very important blocks per game in what may very well have been the three greatest games an individual has ever played. I've added a few of the other great three-game stretches in the description box below. Remember to check out theathletic.com slash thinkingbasketball for that deal. You can also support this channel directly at patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball where there's additional content, a discussion community, as well as an historical database of stats. Hope you enjoyed this one and of course that you're having a great day.